Hello and welcome back to the Media Box at the Congress of Local and Regional Authorities here at the Council of Europe in Strasbourg. I'm Charles Amponta. The Deputy Secretary General of the Council of Europe, Gabriella Battaini Dragoni, has been addressing the Congress and she joins me now. Thank you very much indeed Thank for taking for the, the time to see us. Thank you. Let's jump straight into it, uh, shall we? The financial crisis, it's an economic one as well. It's affecting much of the world as well as Europe latest figures we have is that uh, even Germany, the bellwether of, of Europe, is in uh, uh, contraction of some sorts. We're talking about tight budgets now, aren't we? We're talking about tight budgets for the Council of Europe. How do you see the future of the organisation, the Council of Europe, uh, in particularly the, uh, the, the representative bodies, the parliamentary assembly of uh, the Council of Europe and the Congress, how do you see them shaping up in these tight financial times? Mm. Well, yesterday, indeed, uh, I had the opportunity during the uh, uh, general meeting of the Congress uh, to speak directly to the representative of the Congress on the difficult uh, financial situation of our member states, uh, member states that pay for the budget of the organization, and the Congress is part, of course, of this budget. Uh, it's clear that now we are in the fifth consecutive year of uh, austerity policies, of crisis, difficulties. We see the very negative results of this crisis in our own societies. It's clear that our budget is also going to suffer because of this uh, situation. Um, at the same time, uh, we shouldn't just uh, take it for granted that there will be more and more pressure put on our budgets. I think that we have a duty to continue to look also for uh, helping the organization to reach the level of resources which are indispensable and we can do that. Is that at uh, EU level? Uh, we can do it in two different manners uh, it seems to me on one side obviously the partnership with the European Union is extremely important we have already an extremely high level of cooperation with them which is very reassuring and also for the years to come uh, but in addition to the important partnership with the European Union and what we can do together in our member states, there is also the fact that uh, a good number of our member states are prepared for specific projects to uh, allow us to receive uh, some voluntary contributions. And uh, this is a good thing in itself. Uh, in addition to that, it's clear that we have to maybe open a reflection within the Council of Europe on how to create, build bridges between public and private uh, financial resources. We see that other international organizations are in certain areas of their work, at least in a restricted manner, opening up for also good cooperations between public and private money. Uh, I am quite confident that uh, when we look at the program of activities of the organization per se, uh, there might be excellent opportunities for intensifying cooperation with uh, certain institutions which exist at national level, which are also working in the fields that we take care of, such as Roma with the Soros Foundation, for instance, and so on. So I'm pretty sure that we might be able to intensify our capacity for resource mobilization in the years to come with a view to give not only the Congress, but the organization as a whole, uh, the possibility to uh, perform efficiently and with a real impact in the member states. You talk about mobilization there. Congress has mobilized campaigns to promote the Council of Europe's work, as you mentioned, uh, whether it be the Roma or whether it be something like uh, uh, the fight against sexual violence against children, the Lanzarote Convention. What do you think can be the added value of European communities on these specific issues? Well, the main advantage, uh, in particular for the local authorities which are members of the Congress, is that they are there exactly where the problems raise. So they are on the front line, confronted with the citizens, whether they are children or whether they are Roma communities or other vulnerable groups in societies. And the fact that they are there so close, they can have contact, dialogue, understand exactly the needs of these communities in Europe, and they can be extremely helpful in coming up with immediate day-after-day day solutions. Obviously, uh, the local communities should not feel abandoned by central government, particularly now at a time of crisis, in whatever they try to do to face up with the problems. So it's clear that we cannot put all the responsibility for solving problems on local authorities. Uh, we have obviously to count on them for what I said, immediate reaction, capacity of absorption of problems, dealing with them, etc. 
but the national frame and the international one must also be in conformity with this uh, attitude. Uh, so it's indeed the local, national and international level that count. If we are consistent at these three levels, then we can go very far. Otherwise, it will be impossible for the local authorities alone, who are seeing their budgets cut, to solve all the problems. Now you've just come back from a, uh, a trip to Istanbul, uh, Minister's uh, Conference there. Um, Social cohesion was uh, uh, the sort of the theme, the topic there. How do you see that at local, regional and, uh, and national level? Well, uh, again, social cohesion is a perfect subject for being dealt with at local, national and international level. Uh, what I think is very important is to understand that now we are in a situation in Europe, in any case, where in many member states, not all of them, but in many member states, we are uh, seeing that there is a dramatic, drastic change of the social model that used to characterize our continent. Uh, you know, if you come from another continent and uh, you look at us as Europeans and I ask you, what do you understand about Europe? You probably would say, well, Europe is a continent of democracy, pluralist democracy, and yes, Europe is known because of its own European social model. Well, it is precisely one of these two elements, in particular the European social model, which is now in a phase of change, radical change, and that's where we need an organization like the Council of Europe with a very precise principles to which to stick with a view to make sure that we adapt to the circumstances but we do not dramatically change our own nature and our own European social model. So this is important and the uh, local authorities taking inspiration from the values, principles and I would say legal uh, text of the Council of Europe can do a lot in maintaining their action anchored or directed to the implementation of the principles of promotion of human rights at the local level, protection of vulnerable groups, etc., etc. Unless we do that, then the situation will become very tough in our member states also the local level with violence and reactions and so on. So all in all, if we are not able to guarantee social cohesion at the local level, there where people have to participate democratically, it's not only social cohesion which will be disrupted, but also the democratic system per se, because people will not have trust or confidence anymore, and they will react differently also in relation to national or international uh, governance systems. Let's change direction now slightly to the subject of women. Um, now, Congress has renewed its delegations for the first time and 30% uh, uh, now in, uh, women are now included. How do you see the evolution of the role of women in European societies? How do you see that going forward? Well, it's a, an interesting question because I uh, believe that there have been times where women were even uh, during the last years more present. Now you tell me that it is 30%. Shall we uh, accept that and say, well, let's sit down on it and consider that it is an excellent result? I don't think so. I think that this is a non-going process. We never have to feel satisfied about the presence of a certain quota. The real uh, issue is how to guarantee in a sustainable manner for the years to come, that the role of women is preserved and promoted at all levels, of course, local governance, national and international one. So it's good to have a, a, as a starting point, I would say, 30%, but I would very much welcome higher uh, presence and higher percentages so that we can then say that women are really fully participating in the processes of uh, democracy, human rights promotion, and so on uh, in the member states. Now, you paid tribute yesterday in the hemicycle to Keith Whitmore, who has been uh, with yes. the Congress for some 16 years. Um, we've now got uh, Hervig van Stahl uh, in its capable hands in the chair. How much do you think uh, Keith Whitmore will be missed uh, for his part here? 
Well, uh, I've been able to know Keith Whitmore for a number of years. Um, I have always very much appreciated his capacity to bring the human dimension of human beings in their communities into the debates, and he is excellent in all these issues related to social cohesion, the protection of rights, not only civil and political, but also socioeconomic and cultural. Under his leadership, let's not forget that the Congress has done a very important work in the field of living together, in particularly looking also at the cultural dimensions of integration policies at local level. And I will never forget the important work they did on the religious dimension of intercultural dialogue, namely when they prepared this famous report, which is named Gods in the Cities, where indeed there was a lot of uh, discussion about the role of religions, the role of cultures, and so on, in um, building the identities of everyone and how everyone could fit into a multicultural society being fully respected. So for me, Keith is very much living together and a, a good society based on a real social cohesion. And as I said, uh, we're taking it forward now with Hervik van Star. Uh, capable hands indeed. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. He knows very well the Congress and uh, when you know somebody who knows so well the functioning, the aims of the Congress, obviously you can only anticipate a big capacity for bringing all the resources and the diversity of the membership of the people present in the Congress to a selected number of, uh, let's say, aims. So because of that I believe that we will be uh, seeing in the future, in the years to come, uh, a lot of very good results and the Congress there will be in the continuity uh, of its own process of reform uh, with a view to become selective, concentrate on few things, but to really do them. Thank you very much indeed. You're Thank welcome. You. Deputy Secretary General of the Council of Europe, Gabriela Bataini-Dragoni. <laughs> That's all we have time for right now. Join us again next time. Goodbye.